eternal fire. That's the reason why, as we look at the atonement today, we're not just looking at healing. Healing, we can deal without that today. We can, but we cannot deal without salvation and without holiness, because it says, "Follow peace with God and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord." A person can, can get healed and not see the Lord eventually if he's not not free from sin, if he's not saved, if he's not cleansed, if he's not sanctified, if he's not holy unto the Lord. Redemption for all through the atonement of Christ. That's what we are looking at today in the Word of God. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, the redemptive atonement of Christ for all people. Number two is the regenerative atonement at Calvary for our propitiation. And then number three, we have the restorative atonement on the cross for true partakers. Look at number one. Number one is the redemptive atonement of Christ for all people in Leviticus chapter 17. Reading here from verse 11. Leviticus 17 verse 11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. To make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh that maketh, it made, it makes, it will make until the time of the coming of the Lord. When the door of salvation will be closed to everyone, it says, it maketh an atonement for the soul. Again, we come back to Romans chapter 5. I was looking at verse 8 very uh, definitely now, for God commendeth his love toward us in that while we are yet sinners, God commendeth his love to us. While we are yet sinners, not while we were sick, not while we had problems of money, of finance, of uh, prosperity, poverty, he looked at us as sinners and he knew of all the things that happen to us in life. Sin is the most deadly, is the most dangerous, is the one, is the thing that will cast us away from his presence forever and ever. And it says, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then in verse 9, it says much more than be justified, not just healed, justified. The essence of the atonement of Christ is that he wants to bring us justification. He wants to bring us reconciliation with God. He says much more than being justified by his blood, we shall be saved. Not, it's not talking about healing. For the atonement, it says, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Then in verse 10, it says, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life. Then in verse 11, it says in verse 11, and not only so, but we also joy rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now. You see, the atonement is effective now on this earth. Some people say you can't know who will be saved until you get over there, heaven. No, it says that now we have received 
the atonement. Look at this redemptive atonement of Christ, and we divide that to three parts. Number one, the complete atonement for all people. Complete, satisfactory, and sufficient that anyone on earth, on the planet earth, anyone can have the effect and the result of that atonement now, the complete atonement for all people. Number two is the confirmed atonement for the penitent. It's for everybody, like the river, like the water in the ocean is for everybody. No discrimination, but is the one that takes his cup there and bends down and take of that water that will refresh his personal life. Atonement for everyone, atonement for all people. But it is the penitent, it is the repentant, it's the one that comes in faith to the Lord that actually has the benefit of the atonement confirmed in his personal life. Number three is the concrete assurance of our pardon. When you come and you turn away from sin, and you repent of your sin, and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, the final sacrifice, and our substitute, then that pardon coming through the atonement becomes yours. Look at number one. Number one is the complete atonement for all people. We're coming to Leviticus 17 again, and in verse 11, it says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have, God has given it to us, everyone, no discrimination upon the altar to make an atonement for your soul. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. In Isaiah chapter 53, looking at it from verse 4, Isaiah chapter 53, and we're looking at verse 4, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, and yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted in verse 5, he says in verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions, first of all, before you think of why he was wounded, number one, the central Thing, the important thing, the essential thing, uh, the indispensable experience we to have is total forgiveness and total freedom from our transgression because he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities and it has touched me of our peace was upon him before you come to with the stripes where he, look at verse 6 in verse 6 it says all we, like sheep, have gone astray. That's uh, retreating and repeating, emphasizing the fact that all have sinned and all have come short of the glory of God. And if there's anything we need to think about, we should think of God who has been grieved by our iniquity rather than thinking about the pain we have. Many people center every consideration on themselves. I'm sick, I feel the pain. God is grieved by our sin. God is pained by our transgression. And the first thing that you concern us is that we come short of the glory of God. And because we come short of the glory of God, it pains us to the marrow that we have offended God. Our own, who are we? Who are we? Out of uh, 8 billion people on earth, you are thinking of just one man, just one woman there. We think of the God of 
creation, that his creation has abandoned, that his creation has offended, that his creation has transgressed, and we think of the pain of God who sent his only begotten son into the world, and the world is not looking in the direction of the one who has sacrificed his only begotten son. Our greatest concern as people who are believers is that the world is offensive against God, and all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. The atonement has been made by Christ, and it is for everyone, and yet we would say more than 90% of the world has not known, and they have not reconciled unto God. That gives us concern that the Lord has made the atonement, and not many people have received, have accepted, have believed that atonement. It tells us in John chapter 1, verse 29, it says, The next day John said, Jesus come in unto him, and says, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. He made the atonement for the whole world, but the whole world has not known. And so we want to abandon and forget our own petty, petty, small uh, concerns and think about the world that should have got knowledge about the atonement. And then we take the gospel of the mercy of God for reconciliation unto them. We're looking at number two here. Number two here is the concrete, is the, is the confirmed atonement for the penitent. The confirmed atonement for the penitent. It tells us in John chapter 3 verse 16, it says, for God loved, for God so loved the world, again the world, the whole world, the atonement, the sacrifice, the shedding of the blood of Christ for the whole world, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, the most precious that he can look at and peak in heaven, none of the angels uh, are equal to the Christ that came. All the angels together in their totality, they're not equal to the only begotten son, God could have sacrificed an angel without blinking an eye. He could have sacrificed all those angels together because they're creatures, they're created beings. He could have created all the angels if he wanted to, but if he wanted to, but he took the greatest in heaven. He took his only begotten son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth, the atonement is for the whole world, but the benefit of that atonement is for whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Look at verse 17. Verse 17 says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. If that is what the only thing that the sinner reads, he'll say, well, it doesn't matter what I do because God has not sent his son into the world to condemn the world. If that's the only thing, the backslider, the one who is sinning against God, after he had known of the atonement of the Lord, if that verse is the only one you read, you'll say, well, it looks like but you know, God doesn't mind because he has not sent his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The problem of many people, churchgoers, is that they read one verse, they don't read the next verse. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, 
he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. The one who does not believe in the atonement, that the atonement is for him. The one who does not believe that the blood of the atonement can cleanse him from all sin. The one who does not believe in the power of the blood of the Lamb to make us clean and make us free, he that believeth not is condemned already. If he is condemned already, and he continues in that unbelief until the end of his life, he'll be condemned forever. He's condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. And then he tells us in verse 19, in verse 19, and this is the condemnation that light is come into the world. But a man loved their darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And when you catch Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, and I'm reading from verse 20, I'm just emphasizing to everyone that you need to be penitent, you need to be, you need to regret. For your, the sin you have committed, you need to have remorse, sorrow, sorrow apart for the sin you have committed, so that that sorrow, the sorrow for sin, will lead you to repentance, conviction, leading to conversion. It tells us in Acts chapter 20, verse 20, it says, and now, I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you, and I have taught you publicly and from house to house. Was he teaching? What has he taught? Verse 21. In verse 21, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God. We cannot say, okay, he's made the atonement. Everybody can come in. He says, he teaches, and we teach, and the Bible teaches, and everyone ought to teach repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. It tells us in First John chapter 5, and I read here from verse 18, we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. Those who have hated their sin, they have detested their sinfulness, they have regretted every sin they ever committed in their lives, and they don't take joy, they don't brag about uh, all the evil things and the sinful things they did in transgressing against the Lord. They don't come before the Lord and uh, say, you know, I used to have good days. I used to drink, I used to do that, womanize and do all that. And I remember all those things that I did when I was playing all those pranks. No. When you are born again, you know that it was a dirty life you lived in the past. It was a sorrowful life you lived in the past. And now that you are born again, it says we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself that, that wicked one Toucheth him not. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, we know that we are of God, and the whole world lies in wickedness. Would you believe there are some people who say they believe in Christ? that they are children of God, they are expecting the coming of the Lord, they don't evangelize. You know why? In their doctrine, they believe that the whole world universally will eventually be saved. You say why? They say because he had, the Lord had already provided the atonement for the whole world. And they say the atonement of Christ 
cannot fail that God has ordained that the whole world be atoned for. And because of that, whether we preach to them or we don't preach to them, they are saved. Look at this verse. We know that we are of God. Why? Because we believe, because we have repented. And then we know that the whole world, those who have not believed, they lie in wickedness. And if they are not saved, if they don't come out of that wickedness, that atonement will not avail for them because they have not given themselves in repentance and faith unto the Lord. And we're coming to number three here. Number three is the concrete assurance for our pardon. The concrete assurance for our pardon. In John chapter 8, reading from verse 9, and they which had each been convicted by their own conscience went out one by one. Those were the Pharisees, beginning at the elders, even unto the last. And uh, Jesus was led alone, and the woman, the woman they caught in adultery that they brought to Christ, and they said, Moses said, we shall stone a woman like this. What sayest thou? And he said, he that has no sin among you, pick up the first stone. Understand, understand, Christ made atonement for even the Pharisees, for the whole world. But the Pharisees were not saved. They were not cleansed from their sinfulness because they closed their eyes. They stopped their ears that they will not hear the word of repentance, of redemption, of reconciliation. And because of that, he told them, if you don't believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. And these people, they went out one by one, and then they left the woman standing in the midst. In verse 10, verse 10, when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw. Men were afraid. Amen. I want to begin to give thanks to God this morning. I want to begin to praise His holy name. The Bible says, Come and hear all you that fear the Lord, and I will declare what He has done for my soul. I want to praise His holy name. I want to give His name I want to worship His holy name. I want to worship His holy name. All that he brings in our life. Thank you for all his accomplishments. Thank you for all that he has wrought. Thank you for his love. Thank you for his care. The Bible says that we should bless the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Psalm 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O my soul. Bless his holy name. In my never before. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Praise 
like never before. Oh, my soul is his holy name. Father, we thank you. Amen. Amen. In Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, in verse 5. In Luke chapter 1, remember this morning is for marriage. Luke chapter 1, verse 5. I'm reading, let me read verse 6 talking about uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth, and they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments or and ordinances of the Lord blameless. Both husband and wife were righteous. That's exactly how our home will be. We're going to pray. We're beginning from here. The Lord will make our wives righteous. Yesterday, while I was addressing the congregation, I told them on the, um, I think, okay, was doing the message or summary. I think it was doing the message. And I was telling the congregation, uh, marriage is just beyond all this, uh, go to shop right, I eat this, I wear and coal, I do all of those things. If your wife is going astray and is doing something you know that is likely to make uh, that uh, make her a child of hell, maybe disqualify her from heaven, and you cannot call your wife to order in the name of love, you do not love that wife. Real love, we demand that you call your wife to order. And then you let her know the danger of what she's doing. How that is capable of denying our entrance to the kingdom. The same thing applies to the man. And here we are told that they were both righteous before God. Righteous, not before man now, before God. So if they were righteous before God, they were already righteous before man. We want to pray. Our own will be a righteous home. Do you know what the meaning is? Okay. Righteousness simply means doing the right thing. That our own will be righteous. The righteousness of God will be imputed and imparted upon our life. An imparted righteousness that is an imputed righteousness. The righteousness that we that 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 is bequeathed virtue of our giving of life to Christ. And there is another one that at the result of the life we are living, Jesus speaking, Matthew chapter 5, verse 20, he said the righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. He was referring to the, the one that we live out. We want to pray. 
our righteousness will not be this sacrimonial, uh, sacrilegious, and sanctimonious kind of righteousness. You know, if you go to some old, you wonder how they live so much an hypocritical life. You want to pray, that's not the kind of righteousness we'll be exhibiting in our own. Your wife will know you are righteous. Your husband will know you are righteous. You will know the devil will know you are righteous. Let's talk to God in prayer. Almighty Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that the type of righteousness, oh God, that is above of heaven, who go for my, for me, for my wife, for my marriage. Oh Lord, I pray you will impute it into me in the name of Jesus. Mighty Father, I pray the type of righteousness, oh God, that we have found, oh God, in the life, oh God, Father of Zachariah and Elizabeth, that they were righteous before God, not the righteous, the pretentious righteousness before men. And but they were righteous before God. Oh Lord, I pray that that type of righteousness, who oh God, in the name of Jesus, will be my portion, will be my Lord, in the name of Jesus. Righteousness before God, righteousness that is approved by God. God, righteousness that is signed by God, righteousness, oh God, that is, oh God, fathers, oh God, given by God, marked by God, oh God, I pray in the name of Jesus, you will give me the grace to live that kind of righteousness, oh Lord, I pray, not the righteousness of the world, not the man-made righteousness, not the righteousness that does not hold water, not the righteousness, oh God, that is approved by the world, oh God, signed by the world, oh Lord, I pray, but the righteousness that is before God, righteousness that is approved by God. Oh Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, give me the grace, oh God, give me the power, oh God, to live in that kind of righteousness, oh God, for my wife, for myself, for my family. Oh Lord, I pray the righteousness of heaven, the righteousness of heaven, not the one, oh God, Father, that is man made, oh God, the one that is heavenly made, the one that is, oh God, supernaturally made, the one that comes from the blood of God of Jesus, the one that come from the call, the one that come from the life of Christ. Oh Lord, give me the grace to lead that kind of righteousness. We are going to ask the Lord for the next thing that he's saying there in that verse 6. And he says they were blameless. That word blameless, uh, maybe there's no need to do any exegesis on it. Blameless means they had no blame. You look at their spiritual life, no blame. You get to their home and you ask the why about your husband, no blame. You ask the why about the husband or the husband about the why, no blame. You get to the place of work and you say about this man, this man that is a pastor, how is his life? No blame. Hey, we can live such a blameless life. My God, that was the life of Daniel. Daniel was blameless to and to and true. No wonder they could tell the king. Innocency was found before me. And before, before this, 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 have I done no odd. Hey, we can live such a blameless life. My God, my wife will be blameless. I will be blameless. Our own will be blameless. The Bible said the king of this world come and he had nothing in me. Jesus speaking, he told his audience in John 8 verse 46, which of you convinced me of sin? And then in John 14, 30, he told his audience, the prince of this world coming, referring to the devil, and he had nothing in me, we can be blameless. This is the prayer. And this morning, I want us to beg God and plead before God our life will be blameless. Blameless, true and true. No stain, no blemish, no spot, no wrinkle. Even the devil will be afraid of our life. Demons and powers of darkness will be afraid of the life we live. Our wives will be blameless. All this uh, manly, unforgiving spirit, bitterness, and God, all those things that are entering our life and progress in ministry, God will yank them up this morning. Please, can you pray passionately this morning and tell the Lord we want to be blameless. We want to live a life without blame. That your wife will look at you. Jesus. Oh God, the spirit of blamelessness. Oh God. Father, I pray, release it upon my life. Oh God, I pray, help me to be 
blameless. Help me to be blameless. It's by your help. It's by your grace. Oh, Lord, I pray. Anywhere, everywhere, inside and outside, family, outside the family. Oh, God, in the place of war, in the marketplace. Oh, God, everywhere. Oh, God, help me to be blameless. 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 Oh God, I pray in my life there will be no spots. In my life there will be no wrinkle. In my life there will be no faults. In the name of Jesus, Holy God, I am praying. In my conscience, Oh God, no faults. Oh God, in my emotion, no fault. In my feeling, no fault. Oh God, I pray before opposite gender, no faults. Oh Lord, I pray by your power, by your mind. Oh God, for my wife. Oh God, I pray no faults in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I pray in our conversation, no fault. In our work with you, no fault. Oh Lord, I pray in every area of our life, oh God, no fault. In our blessing, no fault. In our lifestyle, no fault. In our conduct, no fault. Oh God, as we speak, as we talk, oh God, as we converse, oh God, as we, as we commune, as a family, no fault. Oh Lord, I pray that that spirit of blamelessness, oh God, Lord, release it upon my life in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus, I pray for the grace. I pray for the power. I pray for oh God, Father, for that strength from above. Oh, God, Lord, release it upon my life. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, make me blameless. 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 Where they have been blamed, where they have been fought as a result of carelessness. Oh, Lord, I pray. Oh, my Father, by the blood of the everlasting convener. Yesterday, we learned about the day of atonement. Oh God, Lord, Jesus Christ has come. He has made everything possible. Oh God, I pray. Lord of Jesus has atoned for me. I pray, Lord, anywhere there is blame, anywhere there is fault, let the blood of the everlasting convener, the blood that speak a better thing than the blood of Abel, let that blood, oh God, wash me, wash me, wash me, whiter than snow. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, make my name accessing each day. In the name I was saved. In James chapter three, in James chapter three. If you have ever gone through this uh, jail series, yes, uh, you know, I was having those series, having a lot of those series uh, at a time, a lot of them, jail series, different, different series like that, faith series and all that, but jail series in particular, where GF dealt with the book of James from chapter one to the end. And in those series, he, he got to chapter three and uh, Coming to verse 5, even so the tongue is a little member and boasted great thing. Behold, how great a matter the fire kindled. Verse 1, my brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation, for in many things we offend all. If any man offends for the same is a perfect man and also able to or able also to bridle the old tongue or the old body. We want to bring our mouth and our tongue under control. The major area leaders and pastors commit sin against God. Sometimes some commit sin literally on the altar against their congregation and their member. And then out of anger, they say things. Out of anger, they react in a way. Out of anger, they utter words they ought not to have uttered. And then out of anger, you see a man, an husband, uttering words to the wife. And later he will realize, why should, why, how, why did I say this? Why did I say that? We want to bring our tongue under the control of the Holy Spirit. 
that the Almighty God, this is the area that has led to a lot of troubles and a lot of wala in many homes. The GS said there cannot be war so that of work. He said there cannot be rework. The rework cannot take place before without an exchange. That is without an exchange of words, discussion, conversation. For example, before the Russian and Ukraine war, there would have been a conversation. There cannot be rework without an exchange of words. We want to pray in our own. Our words will be seasoned. Seasoned Amen. with my father, the words of my mouth, oh God. The Bible says, Let your speak with grace, seasoned with God. In the name of Jesus, my wife will speak with grace. My wife will not be less. Let the words of my mind and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord. Father, I pray. Let the words of my mouth be seasoned with salt. In the name of Jesus. By your grace and by your power, all my words will go. Where I have to go, Father, misfired. Who will be merciful to me? Where I have to go, Father, spoken to go roughly. Who will be merciful to me? Where I go, Father, I have said what I shouldn't say. Lord, be merciful to me. Who go with you is plentiful of mercy. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. I come before the mercy seat. I pray, Lord, where I have done what I shouldn't do, where I have said what I shouldn't say, oh Lord, be merciful to me, oh God. Let the blood of Jesus wash me and cleanse me, oh God. Oh God, that is why I came to the prayer this morning, that you may pull me, that you may purge me, that you may pray, oh God, purify me and make me, oh God, what you want me to be, holy Father. I just go. Prince of peace, King, King of peace. My words be seasoned with salt in the name of Jesus. Oh God, let my words be seasoned with salt in the name of Jesus. Oh God, more grace. Oh God, give me more grace. 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 Give me in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want us to look at these two scenarios in scripture and we want to beg God consigning our emotion. Now, one of the things as I speak uh, to the people yesterday, if you remember under point three of yesterday's message, there were three points under A, talking about the consequences or the, the consequence of the atoning on the cause or atonement on the cause. And the, the point two was talking about the self-crucifixion. And then point two under that was talking of the crushing of the serpent and all that. Now, I'm looking at that point one or point uh, one under point three that talked about the crucifixion of self. And I told the congregation, your greatest enemy is not Satan. Your greatest enemy is the self. And I elaborated and explained what that means. Our greatest enemy. Many people do not know that. Would you know, let's, let, let me show you something in scripture, or just quote it for my end. You remember the story of Elisha, where those 42 children abused him, and he got angry, and he, he had to lay a curse upon them, and they died because a bear, an animal, a ferocious animal came out, and he killed 42 of those children, all of them, those children went to hell, no doubt. They went to hell. They died under the judgment, severe judgment of God, and they went to hell. Now, let me now show you a parallel passage, probably parallel passage in, in the New Testament, in, in, in Luke chapter 9. Uh, 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 Luke chapter 9. And let's see what uh, some, uh, some of the disciples of Jesus did. And they wanted to exhibit the same thing that Elisha and Elias did. Remember how Elijah also caught fire, and that fire dealt with the prophet of God. Let's see in, uh, in Luke 9.54. 
And when his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, without that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them. They now said, as Elias did. Probably also, as Elisha did. Yeah, they were referring to Elijah, how he caught fire. And why were they asking fire to come down here? Jesus was to pass to uh, uh, Samaria. His face was sent towards uh, Samaria and all that. And you remember by this time, there were issues with the Israelite, uh, I mean, the, the Jews, um, the Judah, Judah and the, the Samaria people. And that was why the woman said that Samaria had no dealings with these other people. And so the disciple became angry. It was out of anger. It was out of, emo, you know, emotional outburst, outburst that they uttered that word. They said, Jesus, why are these people delaying us? Why are they injuring us? Why would they not allow us to pass? You better let's call fire. Okay, maybe I, I should take it to verse, uh, verse, uh, verse 52. And sent messenger before his face. And they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him. That's it, too. The Samaritans did not receive him because his face was like somebody to go through Jerusalem. And because of that, the disciple of Christ became angry. That's exactly the prayer point we want to go. But thank God for Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. He rebuked them. He cautioned them. He corrected them and said, "Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. I'm not here to just destroy people here. And they want to pray. In the name of Jesus, emotional outburst. Our emotion will be under the control of the Holy Ghost. That, have, have you seen some women? Have you seen some wife? Under anger, they will just begin to say something to their children. If later they will not they have seen some mothers have literally cursed their children. I mean, literally cursed their children. Not because they do not love them, all. it's out of emotional outburst. They will just say some rubbish thing, rubbish thing. And later, oh God, forgive me. Oh God, forgive me. I did not mean it to. It will not happen to you, my child. Mm. It will not you my child let's bring our emotion under control but what no, emotion will be under supernatural hand of god it will be under control it will be it will look like uh -uh. does this man not get angry at all does this is this my mumu man not that you are a mumu man it is because your that emotional outburst is not there it is not that you cannot be angry it is not that you cannot be unhappy but it's under control <coughs> It's under control. That is what I am saying. You could see the disciple of Christ. They said, let's do like Elijah did. Let's do like uh, this one did. Let's do like that one. There are people, they just copy pastors and copy people. They say, yes, I know that pastor. It doesn't take no sense. It, it, it will lash you. Uh -uh. But that pastor, it, it, it's not my model. It's not my example. I cannot follow his model or pattern. In the name of Jesus, you want to pray as husband. The children will annoy us. The children will anger us. Folks, our emotion must be under control that we do not let us on them. Heaven, I come before your throne that of we mercy. Do not do I pray that we will that you help and we... give me the grace to put my emotion under. I come before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh God, I pray that this morning. Right. You will give the me grace to fill it with full purpose and order to hold the full step of Christ at all times. Lord, time. again, spirit controlled oh, emotion. Me, oh, Lord, spirit controlled emotion. Oh, Lord, Lord I pray, give it to me. Lord, oh, God, the Bible oh, says, walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. And you fulfill the loss of the flesh. Oh, Lord, I pray, give me grace to always walk in the spirit. Give me grace to always be in the spirit. Give me grace to always, oh, God, Father, be powered by the spirit give me grace that the spirit of god the spirit of god the spirit of humility the spirit of gentleness the spirit of grace the spirit of power the spirit of love the spirit of tenderness the spirit of god we control my life we control my tongue we control my everything oh lord by your grace and by your power oh lord i put my body i put my body i put my soul i put my emotion i put my tongue i put my life under the control, under the leadership, under the ownership, under the control of the spirit in the name of Jesus. Let's pray for our wives. 
their emotion will be under control. Women are Mighty Father, we pray by your grace and by your power that you will help our wives. That Lord, their emotion will be under control. Oh Lord, I pray, none of them will miss fire like the wife of Job. None of them, oh God, Father, will push us, oh God, Father, to the world in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I pray. We pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, Pastor, Pastor Mike, please, uh, just uh, for the next few minutes, just give us one or two prayer points and hand off. Then hand over to Pastor Matthew. Thank you, sir. I want us to pray, beloved. A pastor told us something about that point 3A that is, he mentioned in that um, message of yesterday. You know, the GS on Tuesday, read that book of Galatians, chapter 2, verse 22. I am crucified. I want to pray and ask the Lord and beg the Lord. Oh, Lord, the power, the root, the origin of self and the spirit behind it in my life, I nail you to the cross. Who put your mouth and call upon God? Who put your mouth and nail self to the cross? Who put your mouth and nail self to the cross? Let self be crucified in you. Let self be crucified in me. Oh God, I pray. Every spirit of flesh, every spirit of, of self, every selfishness. Oh God, I pray in the name of Jesus. Mr. Flesh in my life, Mr. Self in my life, I nail you to the cross. 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 Old man, old man, old man, old behavior, old habit. I nail you to the cross. Old lifestyle. I nail you to the cross. Oh, this is how I've been doing it. I nail you to the cross. Spirit of anger, spirit of bitterness. I nail you to the cross. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You will not journey with me anymore. You will not travel with me anymore. We can not go together anymore no 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 not at all we cannot travel together in the name of jesus every cell i nail you to the cross i nail you to the cross i nail you to the cross every old habit old habit shouting 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 holy god i nail you to the core oh god help me to walk in the spirit and not the fear in the flesh help me to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh if we walk in the spirit we will not fulfill the loss of the flesh if we walk in the spirit we will not fulfill the loss of the flesh if we walk in the spirit we will not fulfill the loss of the flesh if we walk in the spirit we will not fulfill the loss of the flesh open your mouth and call upon god who oh god help me to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh who oh god help me to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh who oh god help me to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh i have started in the spirit i will not end up in the flesh. I have started in the spirit. I will not end up in the flesh. I have started in the spirit. I will not end up in the flesh. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lastly, we are going to call upon God. Hey, my brother, beloved, it will be a tragedy. It will be a tragedy. If after your life, if after my life, ah, we are not able to make heaven, hey, it will be a tragedy. After all the preaching, after all the prayer, look at it now, early in the morning, we are here praying. Not because we don't have any other thing to do. Not because mm -hmm. we don't have one thing or the other to do, but we choose to come and pray because we know the importance of prayer. Ah, we want to call upon God. We want to, you know, let me tell you something I know about God. When I read that book of Genesis about Abimelech, that God said, he said, Lord, I did it with the, out of the innocency of, and God said, that is why I also restrained thee. If you look at that, we'll go and read the Bible. He said, I restrained thee from committing that sin. We are going to talk to the Lord. I'm telling you, God has the power to restrain all, to keep us, and to help us to eventually make heaven at last. We want to call upon God. Oh God, I pray. After my journey on earth, oh God, 
Let me be with you. Let me spend the rest of my life with you in heaven. Open your mouth and call upon God. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. That is why we came to pray. That is why we are calling upon God. After my life on earth, oh Lord, let me make heaven at last. Oh God, let me be with you. Oh God, let me live eternally with you. Oh God, let me remain with you. Hey, my God, my Father, the whole essence why I am on earth, the whole essence why I am living, the reason why I am living, oh God, is to make heaven at last. Oh Lord, help me, my family, help us. Oh God, we we'll make heaven at last in the name of Jesus. We will not lose heaven. 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 Every form of carelessness. Uh, oh God, remove it. Oh, in my life, remove it. In my life, remove it. Every form of careless living, careless talk. Oh God, I pray, remove it. In the name of Jesus, remove it, my Father. By the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is sufficient. 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 Oh God, I pray, oh God, anything whatsoever in my life, oh God, that will make me not to make heaven. Oh Lord, I pray, take it away. Oh God, I pray, take it away. Oh God, I pray, take it away. Oh, the spirit of the world, the spirit of anger. Hey, my father, that flesh, oh God, Mr. Flesh, Mr. Canality. Oh Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, the power of the blood of Jesus, take it away from me. Every careless day, every careless talk, every careless moment. The Bible says every word that a man will speak, he will give account in the day of judgment. Oh God, what careless word has come out of my mouth? What careless statement? Oh God, I pray by the blood of Jesus, 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 every mistake I have made, every mistake I have made, oh Lord, I pray, let the blood of Jesus wash it away, anything that is capable of taking me to hell, oh God, I pray, every offense, oh God, let the blood of Jesus swallow it, in the name of Jesus, as I go this morning, I receive the grace of God, I receive the power of God, I receive the love of God, I receive strength for today, in the name of Jesus, as I go this morning, the presence of the Lord will go with me, We go with my family, in the name of Jesus, the presence of the Lord will be with us. We abide with all, with my sibling, with my family, in the name of Jesus. As I go this morning, I go in holiness, I go in righteousness, I go in blamelessness, I go with the spirit of God, I go with the power of heaven, I go conquering, I will conquer the flesh, I will conquer self, I will conquer Satan, I will conquer the world, I will conquer personality, I will conquer, I will conquer, and I will come victorious in the name of Jesus. With opposite self, I will conquer. Oh God, anywhere I go, any where I find myself, oh God, I pray by your grace and by your power, I will conquer, I will conquer, I will conquer in that school, in that university, in that place of work, I will conquer, I will conquer, I will conquer, I will conquer among prosperous women, I will conquer in the midst of ungodliness, I will conquer, I will be a lily in the mud in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Over to Pastor Matthew. Pastor Matthew. Pastor Matthew. I guess it's uh, it's in Jesus' name we pray. Okay. Okay. Amen. Almighty Father, we appreciate you. We glorify your name for great opportunity you have given to us once again. As your son, as a family, to come before you. Michael, come and call upon your name. Father, here we are. We pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. As we are going on in new week, by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, your presence will follow us in Jesus.
Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we bring our family unto you. As we are opening a new way, we pray by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, a new chapter will be opened in our life in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray we present ourselves to you as your children. We are looking up unto you every day. We are looking, we are expecting more and more of more of things you have done for us. We pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. In any way we are going to be going, we will be our director in Jesus' name. Amen. The power and the blood of Jesus Christ will be our manager in Jesus' name. Amen. By the power and the blood of Jesus Christ we will be our organizer in Jesus' name. Amen. Wherever your presence will not follow us, by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, nothing will take us there in Jesus' name. Amen. We present our general in general unto you. By the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, from us to all our, to our children, to our wife, uh, uh, to uh, all things that concerning concerning them, by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ from today, it will be full of testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. Because we walk to, with you, Almighty God, by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. We are ever we go. The sign of this is my children will be upon us in Jesus' name. Amen. And for many years to come, we will continue to have the reason to glorify your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answered prayer. Thank you, in Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For the few minutes, let's call upon the name of the Lord, for especially all the prayer leaders have requested for, all the prayer the members have requested for on this platform, that by the power and that although we targeted, we are targeting December, but from this moment, by the power and the blood, every one of us will continue to reap the reward of the prayer in Jesus' name. Let's call upon the name of the Lord, that by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, nothing we stop, we stop God, nothing can ever stop God, but nothing will stop up us from reap the benefit of the prayer from the platform in the name of Jesus Christ. As I say on Friday, or on me yesterday, that by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, all our leaders, by the power they will be anointed, as they are in, as they are leading us, new anointing, afresh from heaven, will be upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's put Pastor Yomi onto the hand of the Lord. Let's put Pastor Ali onto the hand of the Lord. Let's put Pastor Omar Omarigi into the hand of the Lord. Pastor Dapo into the hand of the Lord. Pastor Shego into the hand of the Lord. Pastor Peter into the hand of the Lord. That by the power in the blood, your Jesus Christ, the glory of the latter day, the glory of the latter day, the glory. Glory of the latter day will be upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, as a leader in this platform, because they have surrendered themselves, because they have given themselves to Almighty God, people will be looking for them in the name of Jesus Christ. What we bow down for when them in the name of Jesus Christ, they shall be dominion of all the trepidations in the name of Jesus Christ, and the glory of the Lord will be upon them. The mighty hand of the Lord of God is going to use them in the name of Jesus Christ. Another Kumuyi in multiple fold, God will promote for them in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we give them into your hand. Lay your hand upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, use them mightily in the name of Jesus Christ. The power of Elijah, the power of Elisha, the power of Moses, the power of Joshua. 
Observe the feast of weeks, of the first fruits of wheat harvest, and the feast of ingathering at the year's end. Thrice in the year shall all your men children appear before the Lord God, the God of Israel. For I will cast out the nations before thee, and enlarge thy borders. Neither shall any man desire thy land, when thou shalt go up to appear before the Lord thy God thrice in the year. Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leaven, neither shall the sacrifice of the feast of the Passover be left unto the morning. The first of the first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring unto the house of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not see the kid in his mother's milk. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write thou these words, for after the tenor of these words I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. And it came to pass, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mount, that Moses wist not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh him. And Moses called unto them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him, and Moses talked with them. And afterward all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. 
until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. And he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. And Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. We shall remain standing as we give our tithes and offerings. Whatever you have brought to honor the Lord, can you please raise it up? In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the hands you raised up even for the tithes and offering in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray.
above and space without an end. The mighty grand, your office and display. For these are prayers of gratitude ascend. is the Lord, the heaven above, and space without an end, the mighty ground, your office and display, for these are prayers of gratitude ascend, the majesty of God is great From shore to shore, from sea to sea, shining sea, let all the 
Deputy Power Ministrations from regions, states, and nations across the world.